I see chat talking about the state of uh, free to play, buy to play, and this is a, uh, I'm going to bring up a tweet actually from Mr. Worldwide Warrior Light, who's making the case in chat. I do want to specify one thing for anybody who's watching this as a highlight or a pod. Uh, thanks, A, for being here. But B, Yoshi P has always maintained that uh, he's going to keep the subscription model rocking and rolling for Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, and basically just like we're going to do what the players ultimately want. And I feel the vast majority of the 14 player base likes the subscription model. I think it's the most fair model for both the developers and the players themselves in terms of that relationship to development servers and continued operations of the game without then having to go through and you know try to create you know you know that fomo that essentially then frustrates a lot of players uh in the content itself but let's talk about it mr worldwide warrior really like uh, tweeting out yeep uh and it needs to go free to play and only pay for the expansions and the glam stuff on the mog station because it ain't an mmo experience if they did this in relation to square enix saying that square enix has finally made it possible to play all of final fantasy 14's completely solo which isn't actually true we you still have the crystal tower which is uh which is a multiplayer experience but what do you guys think let's talk about that for now is a good yeah for now uh what do you guys think i mean it's a headline there's a character limit so like it's gonna lack context so you gotta click their little bitly link to find out if they understand that um you you can't play at all uh Mm -hmm. you, you literally can't so your first time through, you have to do eight and 24 man content with other people for now. It's something they said that they would look into working on, but that would be next expansion, uh, specifically the Crystal Tower raids and the required eight mans. Um, you could do old savages unsynced. And mm-hmm. as long as you're patient, they will eventually all get to you. But there is no way to experience everything that's in PVP without other players. There is no way to do everything that's in the Golden Saucer, but like you don't have to queue with other people, but you have to be around them. Uh, and that does bother some people and you can't do ultimates like you, you just physically can't um like you're never going to experience that content without a really dedicated group so like and even a lot of the raid content and all of that you would have to be so incredibly patient to wait for it to be unsynced and go through a story so if you want to experience pandemonium during endwalker you know, normal is not hard, but you need other players. Um, so like what Yoshi P has done is a lot less controversial than what that headline implies. What he said is that a narrative experience, something where people have emotions and read at their own pace and want to consume it at their own pace can be viewed alone. That is a lot more akin to direct to home movies where the theater is an option, but you can also just watch it on your own. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not saying you can do all of life from inside of your house. So there's still a lot of MMO elements that aren't there. Uh, so, so like, should it go to free to play? I don't know. Should the narrative be available for free? That's how like Xbox Game Pass handled um, Halo, right? They took yeah. portions of it and made that free to play. So should free to play include all narrative up to the current expansion? The uh, I think they will. You know, That's in a terms much more of the gentle free, question, right? And I think it will actually in terms of the free trial, because I like we said, like, oh, OK, heaven's word. That makes sense. It's a really big expansion. It is really where you feel like Final Fantasy 14. Like you're if if you have a critique of ARR, heaven's word really is the answer to that, that critique for the majority of players. And that's what you see time and time again. Oh, my goodness. I'm so glad I stuck with it. I really, really loved heaven's word. But then they added in Stormblood, which, you know, talking with Chili, you know, privately and what I've said, you know, publicly is that I think this then shows that at some point Shadowbringers will be a part of the free trial. At some point, you know, Endwalker will be a part of the free trial. And I have no qualms about that. I think that in and of itself is pretty fascinating that they would do that. But what seems strange to me, and continued to seem strange, is that if you purchase the game, you're forever locked into the subscription there's no going the other way it's a it's a one-way trip and so as soon as you reward square enix with money then all of a sudden they're going to come back to the tin each and every month and i just wonder like do we see in the next like we're talking a long you know time span here at some point in the future where they go in some and create something new something that like within the economy of mmos right now wow and 14 are the only subscription MMOs, WoW has 
uh, managed it with a token, you know, to allow you to play and and I buy mean, subscription time, which I know is question. very controversial. Go ahead, go ahead, Chili. What, what do you want to say? Isn't EverQuest still subbed, or am I confused? It might be. Like Final Fantasy XI is still sub, but when we talk about like what's yeah. the mind share of WoW demo? token on a free version, I think you still have to buy the base game. Right. I think you still have to purchase the, the and you base have to purchase game. your first month. I think you have to yeah, pay for the well, you have to pay for one month, mm -hmm. and then earn enough gold in that month to pay for your subscription, and then keep the loop alive. Yeah. Which would be I mean, a tall do you not ask get a for a new free... player. Like making that much gold for a veteran player is is absolutely a valid goal. Making that much as a new player, like you're in for some work those first few months because you're just not going to have the resources. You're not going to have the string of, of 90 characters at cap that can take advantage of like daily login bonuses and stuff. Like the, the people that play on just a token, a lot of them have like almost a farm that they keep alive. Yeah, and there are many crops, and those crops each have each individually been. Each of those fields has been tilled at a separate time over their career, and so it's gotten very easy now. And they do it in just a handful of hours, same in Eve Online. But that isn't true of a new player. So, like mm -hmm. a lot of times, these IGN articles are like, "And you can play it for this." It's like theoretically, theoretically, uh, but like it's only been created in a lab environment. Like it doesn't, it doesn't function like that in the real world. Um, and you're setting somebody up for failure marketing it that way. Wessel in chat says it'd be nice if returning players could go to actually a free trial mode. So if, for example, they hadn't hit Stormblood yet, they can actually, instead of making a new account and starting over from scratch, be able to just log in and take advantage of the, what, you know, the free trial is because in that, that, and that's essentially kind of where I wonder if we'll ever see the game go where all of a sudden you say, Right now, you know, because if you think about the free trial going all the way to Stormblood, you would say Shadowbringers and Endwalker require you to be subscribed. And if you're subscribed, you have, you know, access to the retainers. But if you're not subscribed, you're, yeah, you're in that free trial mode and those restrictions still apply. But if you were like, yes, this game's great. Here's, here's 20 bucks or here's 40 bucks for it. And then all of a sudden, because I've seen that happen from a lot of, a lot of players who are like, wait, what do you mean? I need to, I need to be subscribed every month just to, to play it i feel like all of a sudden it feels like they ended up rewarding square enix and then square enix is like okay we're gonna take this back from you now which just seems strange with yeah, i mean you're making the cliff even higher if you let them play for the first six months with uh, you let them found this relationship it's like yeah come over to my house you can mm -hmm. stay here you can eat my food uh i'll rent movies for us to watch i'll always drive everywhere i'll take your clothes to get dry cleaned it's on me because i just want you to feel comfortable here Mm -hmm. But then at the end of six months, I still have to start asking you for rent. So like, I don't know that you're really coming out ahead. Um, right. If you invite those people to play their first two years for free and then you go, and now I need a subscription. So I do think like <laughs> just being really upfront with people, this is, it has to be subscription as the end result. So it's just always subscription. Yeah. Um, and free login campaigns are a much healthier model, right? Where it's very yeah. clear from the get go. We're normally a subscription, but right now it's free. That's a much more transparent conversation than mm -hmm. come and play this free game. <laughs> right. And then later you just pull yeah, the curtain back and go, ah, I got your money. Uh, and that just doesn't. So like I, I struggle with like this desire that it's just going to be open ended. Not to mm -hmm. mention everything's on kind of this spectrum from like you want to be inviting to as many people as possible and you want to discourage bots as much as possible. Yeah. Uh, you, you can never be at either end all the way, but I will say that like the two things that keep Final Fantasy 14 from being as bot intrusive as other games, I'm not saying there aren't bots. I'm just saying like to keep it from being as bot intrusive is A, Gil has no long-term value in that like having a trillion Gil would not get you anything that having 10 million Gil wouldn't get you or or 200 yeah. million. And somebody's like, put a house. Like there is, there is a one finite amount of Gil and then you would just have the bulk of what everybody wants. Um, and so having an unlimited supply doesn't really do anything. It's cool, but yeah. like it doesn't encourage bots in the way that like having a billion gold has a real world dollar equivalent. Um, so devaluing that and then also limiting the barrier to entry, making every bot buy an account is good because that means that they have to spend. Uh, so limiting how far they can get in kind of a free trial before they have to pay in limits mm -hmm. how many people because then they have to value propose that how much am I going to get out of this account before it gets mm -hmm. banned right right if I have to pay way, $20 about... in to get $30 out I'm going to go play a game where I can pay $5 in and get $100 out go chili 
by the way, talking about housing, Chris, I don't know if you've read the news recently. Um, you know, uh, Yoshi P does the patch notes live. You know, where he talks about, yeah, the current patch, like 6.5. Um, this was translated from Japanese to English, of course. So, and this was done in like a talkative setting. So, you know, this, we don't know all the information about this exactly. And it's all, it could be subject to change because this is talking about 7.0 content. Uh, but he mentioned that they're talking about having the ability to remove pillars and possibly increase the size of your interior of your house in 7.0. So you might be able to have a large house inside, even if you own a small house in the future. And that, Whether this will me, be a gill sink yeah. as well will be Pretty interesting. Cool. That Pretty tells cool. me, though, also 7.0 is like uh, fundamental memory management and underlying systems have been absolutely worked on for for that because we've seen it with the multi-die system and that's where like i i got the, you know the glamour people are excited that's great i'm happy for them but i'm the technological side of it i'm like holy smokes they've really re-engineered some things in their back end to to make this possible and then being able to say like you got a small house on the outside but inside you can we can we can change that continues to like affirm that fact that i think 7.0 in a way where like makes me even more excited to see what they do with 8.0 because a lot of this work then once complete allows them to hopefully increase their velocity going forward yeah no i it's it's great the amount of content in this game is huge um there is one player i believe in the world who can say they're done with final fantasy 14 like truly done uh so it's like last yeah, week he has or something all the achievements he finished every single yeah. one jp player yeah Woo. he's done done yeah Completed. He's the only person that can go Final Fantasy X. 14 until the next update. <laughs> yeah, but at that point, it becomes much more maintainable. Oh, like yeah, at that you, point, now you yeah. just consume it at the rate that it it comes out. So like once people hit that in WoW, every expansion, all those people get reset. But then it's a race, and so yeah. the number of people that have every achievement in WoW just continues to rise. Yeah. Um, and so that's and they started adding things like all the things and all that, and like there are people approaching some crazy numbers on that as well. So you end up with just ridiculous amounts of completion from the truly dedicated few that that take that as a as a goal mm -hmm. um so I, I don't know i don't think the game should be free to play i think they've set up a business model that works really well for them i think that they have a player base that appreciates it and rocking that boat for a set of people that haven't like you're rocking the boat with people that like your game in mm -hmm. hopes that people who already have either said they actively don't want to play your game or don't even know who you are might like you like it just feels like it'd be better to make a new project yeah. it'd be better to make a final fantasy 20 online and say that's going to launch as a free to play than to just take an existing business model and say i have a hamburger shop but i hear pizza joints make a lot of money so i'm just gonna piss off everybody who likes my hamburgers and make pizza and then i'm gonna hope that people like pizza know to go to the old hamburger place like so i think you're just better off opening another restaurant and they're they're yeah I, i'm from dallas like dallas is the number one chain starting location in the united states we have a lot of restaurateurs who they do really well in one genre of food and they open up and they say oh this is from the makers of this mm -hmm. and they open up another style and another style and another style to see if their mentality could work in maybe another genre of food or another price point or something like that um it would be weird to just pivot an existing business. Now, I have a, uh, I have a, a kind of to flip the script question for you guys in this case is that again, looking at the theoretical future, this is just envisioning like think at a minimum five years from now, you know, 8.0, 9.0 is on the way, you know, in this regards, uh, it's on Xbox, it's on PlayStation 5. We're already starting to talk about or already starting to experience the next next generation. Uh, and we've also finally seen Ashes of Creation hit its alpha phase too. Uh, <laughs> um, I love that. I, I hope somebody clips that. <laughs> Five years for alpha phase two. Um, what still would you, faster what, than Star Citizen. Still faster. I'm, yeah, I actually, I, I, I went and bought Star Citizen just because I was like, all right, I'm going to see did what. Did you though? Yeah. Well, like, I mean, what I, did you purchase? The the base package or whatever they had. Like and what does bucks. that get you? Who the freaking knows? I haven't even played it yet. <laughs> <laughs> I believe you sent Star Citizen yeah. money. I'm asking, like, when does a purchase get complete? Like, did I buy something off Amazon <laughs> when I gave them money? Or did I buy something off Amazon when it arrives yeah, and I product. take possession? Yeah. I think it's when you give them money. The, so uh, it's very clear, like, when you go to McDonald's and you give them $2 and they hand you a burger in, like, 20 seconds, you're like, that was a transaction. But, like, yeah. when we start talking about these games that 
have like a theoretical launch date that's yeah. already moving and is already far away like what are you buying like, well, I don't I if I, if I get the opportunity five, like, i'm not saying you didn't buy it no. Like it definitely seems like I, your wallet knows installed, you bought it. I just literally it have seems not like even. Seems like the game library doesn't know you bought it. it. So it's like, yeah. yeah. It'd be like you go to McDonald's, giving them five dollars, and they give you the bun, the base bun, and then they'd be like, "Okay, we've still got to get the cow bread." And the cow's got to come. Swipe right, but he has got age. Is Julie upset? <laughs> no, she's not. Uh, I just haven't had he time hasn't to play done anything any games. Yet. He hasn't done anything. He just he has it downloaded. That's about it. The um, <laughs> the uh, um, so the, the the flipping of the script, thinking five years from now, keeping the subscription model. But what do you feel? Do you feel like there would be some uh, potential to bundle with Game Pass and PlayStation Plus uh, when you're starting no. to talk about like a, a game that's coming up on 20 years of service? No. Now think about today. Think about it in five years. Yeah, I am. No, <laughs> I think, I think we'll at get some, some point more you're going to bundle so many things that it's going to get frustrating um sometimes i don't want the soda as i've tried to lose weight and as i've tried to be healthier i don't want the drink and so mm -hmm. when mcdonald's implies that it is a more valuable meal because they now include large sodas i'd rather them just decrease the price of the burger mm -hmm. so my counter to that is that there may be a day where we look back at these subscriptions and people say well i get my bmw heated seats and I get my Amazon free shipping and I get my Final Fantasy subscriptions and they pay to mow my lawn and I get three free shirts dry cleaned every month. But I actually just wanted to play Final Fantasy 14. Like, is there a way to pay less and just play Final Fantasy 14? Like, do I have to get all of that other stuff?